Ooh, ain't she a beauty? I just filled up the tanks of the uh, Adventure Mobile. And I don't have a clue where we're going, but you know what? We're going to be able to go at a whim here. I think anytime we want. Because somebody is getting older. <laughs> somebody decided that uh, she no longer wanted to be a prisoner in our home to take care of farm animals. I wasn't a prisoner. <laughs> Uh, anyway, I found a home for all my chickens. Some are going home today, hopefully uh, soon. They're fixing up their coop because they lost their chicken flock due to a predator. And the other half is going to go away tomorrow to a, a good friend of ours. So there you have it. We will be uh, free and uber spontaneous. But today's just a day trip because we got the chicken still. Yeah, we're just going to go see what mischief we can get into and bring our house with us. First stop off the beaten trail is a little place in Crosby called the uh, Milford, Mine. Milford Mine. It's Memorial Park. I'm not sure if it's part of the state park system, but I think it probably is. dirt road going back through here. I think there was a, uh, in fact I don't think, I know there was a really horrible mine accident that happened and, and this memorializes many many years ago. The water access route and uh, yeah, it looks there's a couple of mine pits that are now lakes. Hiking, hiking trail looks like there's some hikers. Parking. Picnic shelter, restroom. We're gonna go on up further, see what they got up here. I was here once before, very long, to many years ago. Access used to be right into town. Yeah, there's this must be where the park begins here, because there's a gate. It is very picturesque around here. Very picturesque. And we made it. Make sure doors are locked up here. Coffee will have to wait.
Candy reminded me that she was here once before too. I didn't think she was. Yep. So I thought I was treating her to something spectacular, but I guess not. Well, this part's all new. I hadn't been down this area. They improved this quite a bit. Yeah. Lots of trails. There's a boardwalk here, and there's a picnic pavilion overlook up there. And this is the historic district. And uh, you can sort of see what this is all about. What happened is uh, one of the shafts collapsed, so a bunch of mud and water got into it. I guess there was just one, even though there were multiple mines within the mine, there was only one way out. And 48 miners uh, were, here's all their names. Of course, this happened like the 1924, long time ago. And uh, of all the uh, people that died, seven were able to get out, climb to the top, so. I, I couldn't even imagine such horror that you'd feel being in a mine and have it collapse on you. That's, that's horrific. But they built a nice memorial here, and this is a boardwalk here, and the water levels like I keep saying and all my videos are extremely low. But still nice and they got the names of the miners on this uh, bridge here. Boardwalk, I, I guess is more what you'd call it a boardwalk. Very picturesque. You are here. <laughs> there's hard, there's nobody here. Maybe some hikers, a few hikers, a couple of bicyclists, one jogger. Which I do quite a bit on my off time. Jogging? One of the survivors is Junior, Frank Junior, and his dad passed away. I, I saw his name on the boardwalk too. That's kind of phenomenal. Son survived, dad perished. And that's all this this was an iron ore iron ore. I can't even pronounce it. Ore? Iron ore range. <laughs> this is a lot of mining of iron ore in this area back in the day they don't do it anymore but way back in the day that went on quite a bit here and the old mines were uh they left big deep holes in the ground but but not for long because they used to have to pump the water out to continue to get the ore but after they were done mining, they just let the water fill up and they became really picturesque, really beautiful lakes. I mean, there's got to be hundreds of them around here. Hundreds. And this, for example, 
was uh, basically a mine pit. And it's now a beautiful lake. And like I said, they're, they're, these are dotted all over this area. And it's a uh, really beautiful mountain biking area. They come from all over the world. I'm not just saying that to go mountain biking here. So I have a street bike. I want to get a mountain bike. They're pricey. Area. Yeah. You have these little pavilions, I guess you'd call it. You can sit down and have a lunch. Yeah, sit down, eat your lunch, like they did. Back in the day. That's a tremendous amount of history right at your fingertips in this uh, park. And there's some trail maps. Looks like people use them and then put them back. We should have one of these. Keeping the adventure mobile. Yeah, let me see if it's worth hanging on to. And what do we got over here? These are some foundations for something. This is an old mine shaft. They have it all fenced off. It's pretty deep. They got the uh, they got a fence around the fence. Probably a uh, smart thing to do. And here's another trail. Where there's like goes one goes that way, one goes that way. Let's go this way. Let's see where this goes. Trails are really groomed with crushed concrete. And I'm certain you could ride your mountain bike through these trails. It doesn't say you can't. And this is mountain bike paradise. That we know for sure. Here's another old concrete uh, foundation for something. Oh, looky there. These are the visible remains of the Milford Mine water tank. And these are the con concrete piers that supported that. Right there. And this is uh, a dry house. Yeah, it's where they uh, changed their clothing and cleaned up after uh, work. Right there. And let's see where this goes. 
down this way. Now this is dead end here. This is an old engine house. Right here. It also was called the hoist house. Where all the uh, miners air, compressor, air compressors and hoisting engines and other equipment was stored. They didn't spare no cost back in the day. This is some serious sturdy construction. Steel, rebar, concrete. There's a fork in the road. We'll come back to this stockpile area and Lakeview Trail. Andy and I do a lot of hiking on our adventures. The main location. That's where the company housing was called. It was called the main location, Main Street. So they used to refer to it as the main location. No rest area here. Family housing. Get them old timey pictures. And that's the fun of camping. You get out and you get to be able to see all of this stuff when you're on foot. Another residential complex, you are here. That's an old uh, copy of a very old timey map. And we're coming into the woods. You can tell it's a weekend, finally, I hear some children at play. Huh. Oh. The crushed concrete comes to a dead end. Yeah, that looks like a wetland coming up. Yeah. Comes right into a wetland, it looks like. Yep, dead end. Okay. And this is where the miners lived. Apparently, they lived on site. And, and that was the case a lot in the old days, like, you know. Where I used to live in Ohio, like the rubber capital of the world, they, they build all the housing to the workers. And they made them affordable so they could live close to their job. And the same thing here. And this is the other trail we passed by. We're going to call this video 
we're gonna call it fake camping <laughs> yeah we're gonna because we're really not camping today but we're fake camping so yeah we'll go set up at walmart for a little bit do our shopping that kind of thing and it'll be awesome if i didn't tell you you'd never know another fork in the road here that one goes up yeah we'll, we'll, go to a lake view or something. we'll stay on the main lake view trail okay another dead end oh. might have to go up and around this is uh stock pile grounds shipping ceased on lake superior during the winter months so the iron horn was stored here right here in a large level area called the stockpile grounds in the spring stockpiled ore was loaded into rail cars with a steam shovel okay let's go the other way hmm. it doesn't show like any of them go to the picnic area or go to the visitor center i have to go through uh, Crosby. Yeah, we'll go up that other trail that we passed. Yeah. This way. Yeah, this must be the trail. This must be why they call it Lakeview Trail here, because you can see the lake on this one. Back in the distance there. Lots of wetland. It's all low, low ground. Even though we've been here before, this is a whole new section of the uh, park that we we didn't even either didn't know was here or it's new. I, I think it's kind of like new. Seems like since the last time we've been here, but we haven't been here. In, goodness, ten years. Yeah, at least 10 years or more. So yeah, everything's different. Everything's nicer. There's a big old wire cable for something. Oh. Kind of random. Random wire cable. Must be holding something up. Okay, this goes to the lake. Here's your lake view. With the bench. You know it's new because there's no graffiti. Yeah, there's nothing carved Carved into the bench. It's all new. I'm certain the camera doesn't do this justice. It's very picturesque. It's quicksand on the shores, though. Looks like a few people footprinted it <laughs> in there. Probably trying to catch a turtle or something. Yeah, that's worth the trip. Yeah. That's nice. Another one. 
I always like to look at these to make sure there's no gnomes under them. You know, gnomes, they love to hide in the mushroom, right, right underneath the mushroom. Everybody knows that. Yeah. Okay, we doubled back and seen everything there was to see that way. Now we're going to go the uh, Memorial Wall, Timbers Shaft, and another lake view. Because that's what the sign says. Here's another old foundation. A couple of them. Pipe sticking up out of the ground here. This was the machine shop and blacksmith shop. Pretty good size. Yeah, this looks like about the size of my uh, blacksmith shop. <laughs> really, it does. Building? <laughs> and it's just for me. This is for a bunch of people here. Yay, children at play. What do we got here? This is an exploratory drill hole. That's what the drilling was used to explore the extent of the ore body to determine both its depth and lateral position. Way back in 1912. Wow. Look at that. Yeah. This must be the wall. In memory of the 41 miners who lost their lives. Tragic flooding. February 5th, 1924. And this looks like some kind of a walk. I've never seen this before. This is all new. One thing's for sure, this is a fantastic tribute to these people. They made it really nice. And these are like uh, individual obituaries for the miners. That's what these signs are. It's actually very moving to see this. And here's the lake. majority of them came from Austria, uh, immigrated here to work in the mines. Some from Finland, a handful just from America. I did not know that. Yeah, I guess if you take the time to stop to read some of these uh, Obituaries, you can find out all sorts of things. Yeah, majority of them were married and in their 30s and 40s, even younger when they passed in the disaster. And a lot of them had a lot of kids. It makes it worse. Yeah, well, a lot of families left behind. All right, this is a little picnic pavilion here. 
Nice uh, tin roof on it. I like that. And this is the uh, timber shaft and lakeshore platform. Yeah. Checking for gnomes. Checking for gnomes. I didn't see any. Some of them are good, but there's a lot of evil ones. And that's the uh, boardwalk that we came in on right there. It's like an old piece of steel. <laughs> Used to be a sign. Looks like it's signs all shot up. Old sign. Probably from way back in the day, sign. And here's another mine shaft. Timber shaft. Well, you wouldn't want to fall in that. Earlier we said there's only one way out basically of the mine and that's why so many people passed but they, I guess according to the historical record they were making this as a secondary shaft. Secondary. And here's a beautiful lookout. Right on the water. Yeah. Doesn't say no fishing. You could fish. And I guarantee you there's fish in here. Got a little step going down there. Yeah, look at that. Oh. Just in case you fall in, you get out. <laughs> this is actually really nice. Really nice. See, you're discovering new stuff too. Yeah, it is, there's a lot of this is all new. So, I mean, since we the last time we were here new. And that pretty much concludes this particular mine pit that, that they've memorialized. But like I said, there are literally hundreds. I mean, it's a guess, but seems like hundreds of these in the area here and they're all used for recreation they really really did it up you know for kayakers fishermen and uh, hikers especially mountain bikers I know they got a trail system you probably should have a pretty decent bike to be on I'm, I'm pretty certain of that not your Walmart <laughs> <laughs> you want you don't want to take any uh, <laughs> Walmart bikes uh, on the trails around here. <laughs> Unless you're a kid riding around a campground somewhere, maybe. So we're headed back to the Adventure Mobile and gonna do some more exploring because we're great adventurers. Fake camping, fakers. What are the chances? And last, but by no means least, the picnic pavilion. As you come off the parking lot, 
has a couple of bench lookouts here. A couple of barbecue grills. And the colors on the trees are starting to turn now.
now that we've faked camped at uh, Crosby, we're gonna fake camp in Brainerd at Lum Park at the Mississippi River. And this is an actual campground. But only we're fake camping. Wow, it's pretty full up. Yeah. Kind of surprised. First time we've seen that. Some of them look long term. Get the flags and everything. I'm just looking for a shade for it. Next to the picnic tables. Yeah, nice park. So, this looks like a good spot to fake camp. We got a picnic table. The campground is right there. The lake is right there. Yeah, I guess I could have. I would have had to plug in the generator, oh, though. That's right. But uh, let's have uh, a real lunch at our fake campsite here. Huh. Let's see here. Huh. Pretty nice, huh? I'm having tuna casserole. Delicious. Fishing pier, boat launch, beach. So, uh, city park restrooms are nothing like state park restrooms, are they? <laughs> I think state park ones are a lot better. 
Yes, that's my point. I was just in there. I mean, they're okay. They're just better than nothing. Yeah, kind of surprised. Plus, the water went, you had to. You couldn't really wash your hands good because you had to keep the cold water on. Yep. Well, I think we fake fake camped here long enough. Now let's go fake camp at Walmart. That's a tradition. Yeah. Now that's something you don't see every day right there. That's a Honda. That is that a Honda? It looks like a Honda station wagon. It's an Odyssey. Oh, Honda Odyssey station wagon? And there it is, straight ahead. Wally World, now hiring. Now hiring signs everywhere. And you haven't gone fake camping until you fake camped at a Walmart. This I can tell you. Right? Absolutely. So, if you guys uh, want to feel like you got out, but but didn't get out, you don't have an RV or an awesome truck camper, just pack up all your camping gear, put it in the trunk of your car, go to Walmart, set it up. Feel like you went somewhere. See you later. Just making our way over to the fake camping spots. Was uh, rude. <laughs> <laughs>